Anime has always been a passion of mine. Ever since the first time my dad showed me Dragon Ball Z on his VHS tapes, I've been hooked. I've been fortunate enough to see some of the best anime ever created. We're talking Hunter x Hunter, Naruto, Full Metal Alchemist, and Cowboy Bebop. But everyone always talks about the best animes. No one ever discusses the awful, half-baked, and sometimes downright disgusting form of media that is bad anime. So, being the curious man that I am, I ask myself a question. What's the worst anime of all time? Join me as I watch every episode of the 100 worst rated anime of all time so that we might finally know once and for all which anime is truly at the bottom of the barrel. This is Search for the Worst Anime. Whenever terrible anime discussions happen, you usually get meme answers from people who don't like a certain anime. Sword Art Online sucks, One Piece is too long, etc. But there is one anime that gets brought up often, and make no mistake, it is entirely worth that title. X-Arm is genuinely the worst anime I've ever seen. Released just this year, with the first episode airing on January 10th, 2021, X-Arm is a pretty standard shounen, isekai, whatever, in its concept. Based on the manga created by High Rock and illustrated by Shin Yakomi, it was released by the Yomiuri Telecasting Company and touted as a Crunchyroll original. Expectations were somewhat high for the anime adaptation until people saw the trailer for it. I say standard in its concept because the end result looks like a video game that runs on the goddamn soldier console. But before I start absolutely ripping into this piece of shit like a starving fly, let's learn about the show and give it a fair, non-biased look. It can't be that bad, can it? Can it? I know that by just looking at the screen, you immediately want to start talking about the animation. But don't you worry, we'll get to that part soon. To me, good anime lies in the storytelling. If an anime has a good plot, and the execution of that plot is satisfactory, then I'm willing to overlook how shitty something might look. So what is the plot of X-Arm? A young boy by the name of Natsume Akira feels very weak, even though that's only brought up one time ever without any proof, but we'll talk about that later. And as he tries to be a hero, he's hit by a truck and wakes up from a coma 16 years later as an AI brain called an X-Arm and is capable of hacking into anything. And although he hates technology, he must learn to wield his new power to help others, fight other X-Arms, find out about his tragic past, and become human again. With that summary, you'd assume that it wouldn't be that hard to get this show right. It's as by the book as you can get when it comes to anime. <laughs> But these niggas must have learned to read from Floyd Mayweather because this shit isn't by the book in the slightest. The first thing that I want to bring to your attention is the length. This anime is only 12 episodes long, which that's not even a problem. There are plenty of anime that have very few episodes and manage to tell a very good story. They're usually very to the point, focusing on the main storyline, and character development happens in real time, so filler episodes don't need to reinforce how a character has changed. But not only does X-Arm not stick to the main point of the anime, but it has five, FIVE episodes of filler. Almost half of this entire anime is dedicated to things outside of Akira and a situation. Could you imagine if that shit applied to longer anime? Like, could you imagine if an anime like Naruto spent half their episodes on f uh, uh, never mind, never mind, my fault. Now granted, some of these early filler episodes are spent on world building and helping the viewer understand what has happened in the 16 years that Akira's been in a coma, but do we really need full episodes for that? Can we not find a way to tie that into the central plot so that half my time isn't wasted on this show and is instead wasted on trying to figure out if I'd rather take the $500,000 or have dinner with Jay-Z? And some of this shit just gets absolutely ridiculous. Like episode 5, where, and I'm dead ass serious, for no reason at all, everyone acts like they're in high school again, and a pink haired virtual reality girl spawns wolf monsters to kill Akira's friends because she wants to have sex with him. Yes, I'm serious. Like, why? What does this have to do with the show? 
You're wasting one of your 12 episodes on this? If you're gonna say fuck it, why stop there? Why not make an episode where Cell shows up and starts bawling? It makes just as much sense as this bullshit. And even the episodes that are on topic are just all over the place. Episodes move so fast that I'm barely able to understand the information in front of me. So much was happening in each episode that I was getting confused halfway into each episode. For example, in episode 3, Akira and his team are told to go investigate a man for possibly having an X-Arm in his possession. Within 5 minutes, they find that man, learn about his plans to turn part of Africa into like android people or something, and start fighting against his maid robot girlfriend, while at the same time, another part of his team is fighting against the United Nations Army. You might think I'm leaving something out, but no, it's genuinely that fast and that confusing. And it creates this really jerky pacing because the remaining time in the episode is incredibly slow, so that things go from the speed of Super Smash Bros. Melee to the speed of Super Smash Bros. Wii U. And sometimes plot points are presented and then completely never touched again. One major example of this is towards the end where it's revealed that Beta, the main antagonist of the anime, is Akira's android clone, and has a similar brain made up of a rare material from space that's supposed to be linked with the creation of X-Arms. This is probably THE most important thing revealed in the whole show, and guess what? They don't talk about it. They don't go any further in depth, and they don't even mention it again. All they say from that point on is, Beta and Akira are the same. We never learn anything from that point on about what X-Arms really are, where they came from, and what their true purpose is. Hell, sometimes plot points don't even make sense at all. Like, okay, like, check this shit out. Check this shit out. In order for Akira to have full power over his abilities, he needs his team to unlock his restrictions and let him loose. How do you think they do that? Hmm? With a computer password? Some sort of digital key for his AI brain? What, some sort of activation word? What do you think? They make the hot robot teammate and the sweet human girl teammate kiss. I'm dead ass. Why? Why do this? Did you need fan service that bad that you were willing to just make shit up to achieve it? <laughs> they really made this guy Akira, I need to unlock my powers, his way into some pussy man- <laughs> I hate it here. I hate it here. I could give countless, countless more examples of times that they just absolutely gave up on a conversation, a main plot point, or even a character entirely. One of the main supporting cast members, Chief Shiga, was murdered off screen and it was discussed for only about 8 seconds. Hell, Beta shows up almost completely out of the blue and becomes the main villain halfway into the show. Shit just be happening! And it's so infuriating because it makes the viewer fill in the gaps of information that the show is leaving out. And if I wanted to watch something that made me have to guess what's going on, I'd watch Scooby Doo or low res porn. Oh, and speaking of low resolution. Okay. Zane, get my cue If you haven't noticed how bad the animation of this show is, you are either genuinely blind or you've been playing PlayStation 1 games your entire life and this is the first modern show you've ever seen. I feel like I don't even need to say anything, but I will anyway. The CGI is absolutely fucking horrendous. It's legitimately the worst I've ever seen. There isn't a single good animated movement in the entire show. The movement is stiff and jerky and doesn't look natural in the weird background scenes. The hair doesn't bounce, the eyes don't blink, it's almost as if everyone is made of steel. Hell, even the facial expressions don't change at all. This bitch has been smiling in the face of danger for the past six episodes. It's almost as if every single person in this show is a VTuber model who got modded into Oblivion as an NPC. And fighting sequences have absolutely no weight to them. Since everybody is CGI, there's really no impact behind the character movements, and they all just sort of float when they fight, and never really make contact with one another. And speaking of fights, there's visual clutter everywhere, all the time. The shit looks like a Snoop Dogg concert. Random fucking smoke constantly on the screen, random visual effects that do absolutely nothing to complement the fight scene, and stock explosions. So, many, 
stock, explosions. And these things are terrible. But at least they're consistently terrible. But this next part, <laughs> oh, this next part made me drop my fucking jaw to the floor. For some reason, there's two entirely different animation styles in random scenes. Some of it's in 2D and looks like standard anime, and some of it is CGI and looks like complete and utter shit. And the result is so jarring that it's impossible to focus on anything else going on. It looks like the CGI models were slapped onto the top layer at the end of production and aren't meant to be there at all. The only problem is that all the main and supporting characters are CGI, so it looks even more out of place. I was so confused when I first saw this that I had to do my own research to look up what the fuck was going on. Why? What the fuck is that? Bro, what is this? Why do they look like regular? Bro, this is bad. What the fuck is going on with this? Like, why is he like, they're different colors damn near. And it turns out that the director, Yoshikatsu Kimura, had never directed an anime before. So instead of hiring an anime studio with experience, he instead took it upon himself to change the direction into an anime that looked like live action and created CGI models. But it wasn't only Kimura at fault, because almost everyone on the main staff had little to no experience working on an anime before. So no one saw it as an issue when it came to those decisions, because they have about as much experience in anime design as I do. But that doesn't answer the question of why some of it is in 2D. Why do one-off characters and backgrounds get to look so much better? And I couldn't find anything on that, but I do have a theory. See, 2D animation is usually much cheaper when it comes to creating animation, and the only time you would ever want to use 3D animation, like CGI, is when you're going to be reusing a lot of the same character models. So, my guess is that our good buddy Kimura spent all the budget he could on those initial CGI models for the main and supporting cast, but when he realized it would be too much money to do for the entire show, he switched up last second and made the one-off characters and locations 2D. This also makes sense for the CGI models being stiff and never changing facial expressions because the animation studio could just reuse them over and over. But I couldn't find any official word on this being true or not, so if you have your own theory, please let me know in the comments. And uh, subscribe too. <laughs>I want to talk about the pros of this thing because despite me shitting on it for the past few minutes, there actually were some redeeming qualities. First off, the premise of the show doesn't actually sound that bad. If it was executed a little bit better, maybe if it had been released on YouTube by a small team instead of a crunchy roll original, I would cut it some more slack. I think expectation definitely made this anime much more hated than it is, and it's pretty easy to see why. This is supposed to be a crunchy roll original. How did they let this happen? The site known for anime casually releases the nastiest looking shit this year, no less. Again, had it been a small team, a YouTube project, or a random Twitter video or something, this probably would have gotten some praise as a stepping stone into animation. But this cannot be a finished product. Going back to the pros, I think the voice acting was actually pretty alright. And Beta actually puts on a wonderful performance that I actually enjoyed. He really does sound like an asshole, mocking the main cast as he managed to slip out of their fingers. Sometimes it's a little bit phoned in, yeah, especially towards the end, but for the most part, the voice actors knew the assignment and did good work. The show also actually improves a lot during the climactic episodes during the series. Faces begin to show some emotion, and the pacing is a lot more stable, allowing me to watch a few episodes and not absolutely hate myself the whole time. And uh, uh well, yeah, that's it for the pros. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the cons. <clears throat> 
terrible animation, two different animation styles, weird transitions and lack of keyframes, pacing is way too fast and still boring, the animation is awful, dialogue is rushed and doesn't make any sense long term, character development is either briefly spoken on or just flat out doesn't exist, the animation is dog shit, there were 5 filler episodes in a 12 episode series, combat has no weight and fights feel flat, animation is horrendous, there's very weird fan service, color correction and visual effects constantly distort the visuals, even the 2D animation is bad sometimes, they rip off other famous anime media to the point of straight up plagiarism, some scenes are literally lower resolution quality than others, shit randomly happens by characters pulling something entirely out of their ass, there are stock explosions on top of the animation, things that interact with the CGI models are weird like teardrops with this floating bruise on Minami's face, there are YouTube video transitions in the anime, and the animation is the worst thing I've ever seen. And yeah, this list is long, and yes, all of these things are bad, but honestly, I could have forgiven all of these. What really makes this show the worst I've ever seen is Up until this point, I was going to give the anime a 3 out of 10. I was going to say it actually wasn't as bad as people say, and that there were some redeemable qualities. But this episode was so fucking bad, such a spit in the face, that I immediately took every single ounce of credit that I gave this absolute bag of dicks of a show and threw it in the trash, the same place they put the budget. This episode begins with the wrapping up of the main arc. Akira beats Beta, Japan is saved, and everything's cool. Except it isn't, and somehow the servers of Japan's military base have been corrupted by Beta's evilness or whatever the fuck, so Akira has to hack into the network of all of the world and save everyone. And how does he do that? How does he save everyone, you might ask? With an off-screen fight that's explained instead of shown. And then, as if that's not already the worst ending you've ever heard, Akira decides to save all of the world except Japan and decides that his last resort is to fucking detonate EMPs across the entire country and destroy all of the technology in all of Japan. That includes himself and two of his crewmates. And that's what he does. That's the end of the show. That's how he saves the day. Show ends, roll credits. So all of that writing that went into the main premise of the show, the few areas of character development that had been building up, all of it, gone. We don't even know how Akira became an X-Arm. Hell, we don't even know what an X-Arm is. Those are things the show said they would explain, and they just didn't, and instead killed all technology in Japan. And not only did that kill off the main character and two of the supporting cast, think of the irreparable damage that would do to an entire country. Hospitals, airplanes, traffic lights, cars, playstations, vibrators, all of that shit is gone. And Japan was the only place he did that to. He literally saved every other country on earth, even the ones that didn't have any major technology. But no, let's fucking kill me, half my country, and send the other half to the Dark Ages. This nigga was a damn psychopath, man, Jesus. The show itself had a lot of undertones that spoke about what it means to have free will as an android, and the pros and cons of technology, and why we should use technology to help people as much as we can. And then Akira kills all the technology in Japan and says life would be better without so much technology. <laughs> like, what, what the fuck? It's such a jarring ending that I genuinely had to rewatch it to make sure there wasn't some Marvel after credits end scene or something. But no, that's the ending. Four hours completely wasted and a middle finger right up my ass for thinking I could find some sort of enjoyment from this dumpster fire. Fuck this show. Fuck everything about it, and fuck me for making myself watch it. I tried to give it as much credit as I possibly could, only for it to spit in my eye, shit in my cereal, and steal my time. Everything from the animation, to the writing, to the plot, to the characters, to the absolute worst ending I've ever seen. X-Arm is the textbook definition of terrible. This might only be the first episode, but I might have to agree that this may, 
in fact, be the worst anime ever created. Yo, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe so you don't miss any future content, and comment down below which bad anime you'd like to see me cover next. Full disclosure, I took almost all the inspiration for this series from I Hate Everything, who started the Search for the Worst series on movies. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out as well. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you next time. Peace!